Okay, well, happy Thursday evening to everyone. Uh, haven't done a vlog in a little while. I've been out uh, riding and uh, working. <laughs> Just haven't had time to get to the other stuff. But this has been sitting here waiting for me for a week because it arrived when I uh, took off last week to go to the Ozarks uh, and ride around with the boys. So um, we're going to do a little uh, what's in the box. Okay, so let's open this up. I already know what's in here for the most part. We bike has been a little slow about uh, filling some of their orders, uh, back order stuff, and not uh, having everything in stock. So that puts the whole order kind of late. But we're gonna see if they got everything in here, and hopefully, I'm keeping you all on camera. We should have a Daytona windscreen for the Rebel. It's gonna be a little stubby. Uh, a little bit bigger than a gauge spoiler, but uh, not quite a huge touring screen. Something's better than nothing, right? Oh, that's heavy. I know what that is. No, I don't. That's just not quite what I thought it was. There should be another heavy one in there. Let's see what else we got. I got a chain for my Super Cub that I will put on before I embark on my uh, cross-country trip. Uh, this is a uh, X-ring chain. The chains that come on these little bikes are just standard chains. They're not X-ring, O-ring, uh, you know, presumably cheaper, lower rolling resistance, whatever. Uh, but that also means more maintenance. Uh, X-ring chains uh, are less maintenance. So I'm going to put that on there, see how well it works. If I have problems with it, I've got a factory chain. Uh, they cost a whopping $10.83 or something like that. Uh, this one was about 40 bucks. Uh, so anyway, plus shipping. What else do we have? Got another power pigtail. Uh, hey, losing my shipping thing. This is the what? This is C125, so that's definitely for the Cub. I got an extra one because uh, I sent mine out to somebody. Come here. You stay. What else do we have? We have a new sprocket. Uh, I decided to get a new sprocket set for the... Uh, I believe I get this for the CT125 to play with its gearing a little bit. Um, I'll have to remember what I was doing, uh, but I got a 34 and a 36. So these will work on either the... Uh, oh, no, wait, let me see. Is this a 420 or 428? That'll tell me. It says Grom. I'll have to verify. Uh, I've gotten several sets of sprockets, and I don't remember which ones these were. Uh, the... Super Cub is a 420 pitch chain, and the CT125 that's still sitting over there waiting to be put back together is uh, 428. So, I've got to remember which ones these are for. But anyway, so I got a 34 and a 36 uh, rear to play with. And then, let's see what else they have. Yeah, there's the other heavy one I was looking for. This, these are bar end weights, or bar end adapters to replace uh, these factory ones that I botched up. Uh, that works, but, you know, it's it's a kludge. I stacked a bunch of stainless steel flat washers to bring it out a little bit, and uh, it, it works, but it's not the most beautiful thing. These are uh, different adapters that allow for a little cleaner installation. If I can get it out of there, I'll show you. They're just machined adapters. Sorry, I'm keeping you on camera very well, am I? Ah, oh, there's more little tabs. I want these to stay in there. So these are just collars to replace what's in there now. Uh, the end of the bar on this uh, has a welded in bung with a screw in it. Uh, the problem is they sit, you know, the, the factory weights uh, or end caps, they're not even weights, uh, they sit in too far, so you have to space them out. So I just used some longer screws and backed that with some stainless steel washers. This spacer right here uh, is going to put it where you want it, and then this gives you a uh, larger diameter to uh, hang on to. So anyway, should be all right. We'll see how that works out. And it says for 1100 DCT, all right. Now hopefully those are 7 eighths because that 
other part looks like be a little big. I don't think that's seven eighths. It looks like a one inch. We'll sort that out. What else do we have? We got the star of the show here that's getting ready to come out of that box. Well, the star of the show is going to be the windshield. This is the other co star today. This thing was on back order forever. This is the dual piston Kitako Nissan caliper for the Super Cub. So they include a bracket. Uh, I'm presuming that it's just a little bit different mounting arrangement, but this is just a single piston caliper on here, and uh, the Nissan is a dual pot. So you got two separate pistons, give you a little bit more clamping area, hopefully, uh, and I'm hoping that firms up the spongy brake lever on the little cub here. It does okay, it's just really spongy. Um, I still haven't found a, a company to make a set of custom lines, uh, stainless braided lines, because you'll need one here, uh, coming from the body uh, coupling uh, off of the ABS pump, uh, and then the upper one is going to come from the master cylinder down to that uh, coupling down there. So anyway, it's going to be a two-piece line set. I'll find somebody that'll make it. Anyway, I'll get to putting that on, hopefully, uh, before the trip. It looks so pretty. I don't care about the red color. I just like the two-piston arrangement. Uh, okay, then. So let's look at the screen. I might put this on tonight if it's not too difficult. Sorry, trying to keep you guys on the camera here. Let's get you in the action, shall we? Okay. Daytona. Oh, it's not very big. Anything will help. Rebel really needs some kind of uh, forward wind protection on it just to break up the pressure on the chest because at 70 miles an hour, man, let me tell you, you're really fighting to hang on to that bike. I feel like a flying squirrel in a wind tunnel. Okay, brackets. What I'm curious about is the quality of these brackets because it's gonna have to tie in pretty stoutly to the uh, handlebars or to that front gauge stay. Where's the opening, guys? Come on, come on. There it is. It's a hollow package. Okay, so yeah, oh, that's yeah, that's that's well made. Ooh, she's beefy. Yeah, that's actually nice. It's minimal, but it's very solid. There's no flex in that. Welds look good and strong. Not so sure about the uh, paint or powder coat on here. That might chip off eventually, but we'll see how it fares. Cool. I have no idea where it goes yet. Got to sort it out. And I don't see instructions unless... Oh, yeah, here they are. Okay, then. Come on out. Come on. There you go. And not a very big screen. I was kind of thinking it'd be bigger than this based on the pictures. It's not very big at all. Oh, no, that ain't big at all. Well, we're going to find out if this works worth a flippity hoo or not. So, I'm thinking... Sorry, I'm trying to get you up here. You can see the action. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere kind of in this... No, maybe it's down here. Yeah, it's going to be down here based on that shape. So, we're going to find out how much or little it does. Uh, I was kind of hoping for something about that tall. But we'll see if this uh, makes any difference at all in uh, ride comfort. I, I would imagine just anything breaking up a little bit of the pressure right here uh, is gonna help, so we'll find out. It wasn't very expensive, maybe a hundred bucks. Oh, maybe I should not have put that there, huh? Okay then, I'll get set up, uh, grab the tools that I need, try to read some Japanese here and uh, figure out how to put it on. Make sure they got all the parts too. Okay, so I took a crash course in Japanese and uh, learned pretty much what they're saying here. They're just saying uh, don't over tighten and uh, don't break stuff. Uh, but I'll show you my uh, cheat and hack. Load up Google Translate on your phone. Enable camera. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not, but uh, 
you may not be able to see it. I'll take pictures of it and throw it in here. Uh, this is what I get uh, with that, all Japanese. And then you do that. And look at what it does. It translates in the place where you remove step one with the genuine turn signal, blah, blah, blah. Use the flat washer, refer to the illustration, blah, blah, blah. Spacers, bracket, flat washer, M6. Paint that neat. And then you go back to this and yeah, good luck. <laughs> neat. Uh, what they're saying with these uh, cap nuts, uh, they are locking nuts, but they're saying not to put them on too tight. Kind of figured that much. It says uh, you can deform or crack the screen if you go too tight. Yep, that's what I figured. So their uh, diagram isn't really intuitive here, but what they're saying is uh, you pull out the two uh, turn signal bolts right here, these guys, that one and that one, they look like M6s, and uh, there's a little cap nut on the back side of that. Probably have to hold on to it with uh, a socket or something to keep it from spinning. Uh, but basically we pull those guys out and catch my instructions as they fly away. Uh, da -da -da, where was I? Da -da 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 there we are. Come here. Stay. Be good. Stay. Stay. Anyway, uh, they're saying in the diagram, uh, use these spacers here. They're not real clear on where the spacers live. It looks to me like it's behind this. So this is gonna go in this way. We're gonna drop in, minus the washers. Uh, we're gonna put this in here with a washer underneath that. And then these spacers are gonna go behind that. And that's what's gonna screw into the turn signal bracket and back up to that uh, cap nut that's on the other side of it. So these just space it out to get it out there a little bit. And then they've got a uh, light blocking gasket, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, that they're talking about putting across the top of the headlight right in here to minimize the amount of uh, light that's kind of reflected up into the screen uh, to light the screen up. We don't want that. So I'll clean that off with some alcohol and uh, paste that guy right there on that top edge. That's all we need. Put it together. Should be about a 10 minute deal. So uh, I'm gonna go get my tools. Okay, let's we'll start pulling this thing apart. Uh, it's a five mil uh, hex on the front and a 13 millimeter cap nut on the back. I'm gonna just do it with 13. Put it in my pocket probably. Nope, I left it hanging on there. Okay, so, so 13 hanging on the back. I don't know that I'm gonna need to hang on to that. I just thought I'd get prepared. I'm not sure what it's gonna do when I turn it. Not very tight at all. Doesn't feel like it's spinning, coming right out. I'm gonna need to go back in the garage and get my uh, Loctite. Because with all the added uh, vibration and stress from a windscreen being on there, probably a good idea to have that Loctite in, eh? Don't drop it on a nice pretty paint. Okay, so this is a collar bolt. That's why they gave us that, uh, that spacer to replicate that effort. Okay, so that goes in the pocket. I don't even think I'm gonna mess with the ratchet. Oh yeah, maybe I need the ratchet. Oh yeah, it's tight. Yep, you don't need to hang on to the back, so don't worry about the 13 millimeter uh, cap nut in the back. It seems to be captive. Okay, so, got that. Those two are out of there. Uh, I'm gonna go grab my alcohol for this. Should have brought that out. I need more beer. Oh, hell, it's hot today. It's like 92, 93 out here right now. It's six o'clock at night. Okay, alcohol in hand. Fresh microfiber cloth. And let's clean that up a little bit, shall we? Make sure it is clean and bug free. No oil for that little sticker to work its way out. Go ahead and apply this now, just get it done. 
So placement, it is a little longer than that is wide, so oh, whatever. Ooh, it's foil. Fancy. Here we go. Oh, it's almost like I've done this before. Takes me back to my window tinting days. Didn't get it quite so, hey, didn't quite get it centered up. It's a little longer on that side than it is this side, but you know, whatever. I can always trim it with a knife. Ugh. Okay, I don't think it's coming off considering how sticky that stuff is. I'm gonna trim that off with a knife later. Now, we are going to Loctite the screws. I love this gel stuff, so much better than the liquid. Didn't need that much, but I'll spread it across two of them. Okay then. So we got our two uh, little spacers there. We got this. Uh, let's keep those together. Now I need to find, hey, don't do that. Now I need to find these. All right, so they gave us a couple of uh, self-adhesive rubber pads here for the faces of the uh, brackets. And I guess it's just a matter of lining up the uh, holes and sticky, sticky. I clean these uh, with alcohol just to make them even grippier. That's it. Got it lined up. Okay. So then now it's uh, figuring out all this hoopla. Gonna have to read the directions. We'll come back to you. Oh wait, no, I got most of it here. So we got the nuts, washers. So we got, these are plastic. So these go there. And then we've got flat washers backing the nylock nuts on the back. So each of these is going to get staged like this. Hopefully my camera doesn't self-destruct again. Okay, there's four of those. I'll get the nuts and the bolts all ready to go here in a second. Let's go ahead and stage the screen. Let's get their little warning sticker off of here, which I've already looked at. I'm gonna take a picture of that just so I can translate it later. They're telling you not to do it in the sunlight, not to leave it in the sunlight. They're saying because of the uh, curved profile, it can actually refract sunlight and uh, damage your bike or the Stuff behind it acts as a lens. All these screens say that. I've never really had a problem with it. I leave my bike parked in the sun all the time. Doink! Okay. So, let's put the upper two in there first, shall we? Grab a nut and a washer and a nut and a washer. And let's see if we can get it lined up. Yeah, we just stretch it on. Cool. I'm going to put those other two in there and uh, put the nuts on. I'm going to put my nuts on, man. And I'm not going to bother lock tightening these, obviously, because they have nylock nuts. Ooh, that's it. Okay, so that's pretty much the completed look of it. Not bad. At least I got something done before the battery killed itself. The camera killed itself. Let's see if we can get in there. Tight clearance, I'll tell you that. Stay. And these are four millimeter on the front, four millimeter hex. And I believe that back is a 10, could be a 12. I'll have to put a wrench on it. Hmm, it's gonna be tricky. Ugh, my hand's not that thin. How can I get in now? 
Oh, how can I get in there? My hand's not that thin. Here it is. Oh, you bastard. Can someone come over here and tip my bike forward for me, please? So this will stay on. Oh, that finger's not that thin. <clears throat> yes, I was hoping the screen would be a little taller and I would be able to put my uh, rider scan on there, but that, it's not tall enough. Uh, it's not even close to tall enough. I need it to sit about there for the rider scan to have enough room. Oh well. Can't have everything. I do miss that rider scan. I'm so used to having it on my bikes. I go staring in the corner for it, looking for my blind spot, and I realize, oh, it's not there. I've got a head check every second and a half when I'm ready to make a lane change. Because here in Houston, the cagers are so aggressive. They're so fast. You can be cruising along 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour with everybody else. You do a head check right before you make a lane change. You think you're okay. By the time you can look back forward, hit your signal, and look again, somebody's already flying in on you at 95 plus. I'm trying to squash you. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, how can I get in there? It's getting tighter. Okay, so here's the finished product. The screen, anyway. I'm gonna, you know, I put this mount on there the other day for camera, but I'm going to use it for my phone here for the next couple of days uh, because I have my little draggy GPS uh, performance meter over here. I'm going to do some 0 to 60 times and acceleration runs and stuff like that but for right now we're just talking about the uh, daytona short visor uh i'll put the proper name of it up here so it's not very tall it's just a hair taller than the uh the factory gauge spoiler but it's going to give a tiny bit more frontal deflection uh i doubt that it's going to do much for my face head whatever probably not much for my torso uh, it might break up the flow right across my chest here so I'm gonna take it out for a little quick run and get it up to highway speeds and see what it feels like so I'm gonna grab my gloves and I'll be right back with you so I haven't finished editing my uh, exhaust uh, swap install video with the sound comparisons and all that but uh, I'll give you a little taste of it in this video if this makes it out before that one not a hundred percent in love with uh, the way it sticks out as far as it does but it definitely clears the swing arm and that's okay uh, it doesn't stick out any further than the factory exhaust the factory exhaust was actually out to about here is much chunkier uh, so this doesn't even stick out as far as the factory it just looks like it does because it's short and stubby but uh, oh, it sounds so good okay off we go okay then Drive. What are we in? Standard mode? Yeah, that's fine. Won't rub it up too much here with the neighbors around, but uh, oh, this thing sounds so good when you open it up. What you doing there, fellas? So I don't know if I'll keep this screen on here long term because it's certainly not going to be a touring capable screen or you know it's not going to enhance my touring let's put it that way uh, I'll need something a little more substantial on here for uh, breaking up the wind on uh, highway trips yeah it's not really doing that much so, I think it's going to be more aesthetic than anything else. The pictures make it look much larger than it is. Uh, they give you measurements in centimeters, and I measured that, and I was thinking, okay, well, that'll be good if it's above the visor, because I was thinking it would be about that tall. But they're talking about from the, uh, you know, overall height, you know, right off the headlight. So, it's not that big. 
and you guys can see it from where you are. You're closer to it than my eyeballs are. Uh, so yeah, anyway, my eyes are way up here, but yeah, it's uh, it's down pretty low. I'll get up to 60 or 70 miles an hour over here on this uh, park road and see if I notice any difference in uh, wind load on my chest. Kind of thinking it's not going to be much. Uh, it actually does seem to make a little difference on the chest. I'm only going 55, 60, but I can feel uh, a marked reduction in the chest pressure, so that's good. It's not much of a little screen, but it is deflecting some air. It's good. So let's get up to 65. There's 65. Yeah, yeah, it's actually reducing the wind pressure on the chest. I am surprised. Not a huge reduction overall, but right in the center of my torso where, you know, you felt like you were just getting pushed off of the bike, uh, it's not as severe. Now, my shoulders and helmet are still well in the clear, so I still feel a lot of, not buffeting, but I do feel pressure up top, but my core is not being pushed on, so that's good. Yeah, it's actually making a surprising amount of difference. Color me surprised, man. I gotta say, when I pulled it out of the box, I was very disappointed in how small it was, but it's not bad. I think it could stand to be about three to four inches taller, maybe just a touch wider. about three inches taller and a little wider it would be ideal uh, because then that would give a little more uh, upward coverage and uh, it also give me a place to put my rider skin <laughs> difference in chest pressure nothing for the helmet or the shoulders but definitely on the chest I'm feeling the cutoff right at just above my uh, sternum kind of below my shoulder so. it'll help definitely better for cruising around uh, and doing the you know the back road jaunts that I do and uh, commuting around town that sort of thing it's not going to be a great touring screen, obviously. It's too small. So I will look around for uh, somebody else to make a, uh, hopefully, adjustable screen. Something that's a little bit wider and, uh, you know, it gives the ability to raise up and down. I kind of like the GV Airflow. Uh, they have a universal airflow that is impossible to find these days. And I don't know how the mounts would work. I don't really want to clamp anything to my fork tubes. Um, then uh, I like Madstad but I don't know if I want to put a barn door on the front of this it needs to be pretty sleek I don't know, I'll look around I was looking at a couple of universals you know, from uh, National Cycle and uh, was it Memphis Shades has some that look good uh, I really like the look of uh, Dart fly screens out of the UK, but I don't think they've got a fitment for this yet. We'll see if they come out with something. Get a dark smoke or, you know, something about this color. Uh, a little bit taller, maybe with a little more of a lip on the top to kind of deflect. But I don't want a big bat wing fairing on here. That's just, I don't know doesn't match the look of this bike yeah so my early verdict on it is it's definitely better than nothing it's not great but it's not bad 
from the front it looks like it has a little bit of size to it but uh, from back here you know from the rider's perspective it's really small it's barely a fly screen one interesting thing i've just noticed about the this windscreen is it's deflecting bugs right at my neck i've had three neck strikes <laughs> in the last two miles interesting that might be suboptimal <laughs> My bike seems to ride much better now that I've increased that rear preload. Uh, factory position was three. I've upped it to eight. I might back it down to seven, uh, but I'm using pretty much all the throw right now without burying the zip ties in the bump stops. Uh, so the, the zip ties are sitting right on top of the bump stops. So that tells me I'm pretty much in the sweet spot. Uh, the front I've left where it was at uh, like nine millimeters or whatever the factory setting is I may crank it up just a tiny bit because I noticed that the front feels a little softer now than the uh, Than the rear so you can feel the front dive a little bit more uh, out of proportion with the rear so I might just bump up the uh, Front preload a touch, but again, this is just a band-aid because the uh, the factory shocks on here don't have sufficient compression damping, so you have to fight that with uh, spring preload. And that just makes the rest of the ride a little harsher, but it's tolerable. It's a good trade-off because before, you know, out on the highway, moving 65 miles an hour, you'd hit ripples, or I would hit ripples on this thing, and uh, I would get bounced out of the seat and quite literally launched out of the saddle, two or three inches out of the saddle. And that's not good. Not moving freeway speeds, it isn't. Anyway, so the uh, little fly screen works pretty well. I like it. I will catch you all later. Thanks for tagging along.